Hey guys, Big Swear coming to you from the car. I love doing car videos. <laughs> when you're out and about, um, one thing I want to talk about, and it's an important thing, win cryptos, win silver, win moonshot, win is the price and value of cryptocurrencies and precious metals in this time of economic turmoil and geopolitical turbulence going to be realized. And there's something big that everybody has to keep in their mind. We do not have free markets in America, anywhere in the world, especially since the invention of computers. The first computer programs were written for the financial system by Alan Greenspan in the 1960s and 70s. With the help of Arthur Burns, the head of the Federal Reserve, he implemented computer trading programs into the Fed, into the Exchange Stabilization Fund. So since the 1960s, we have not had free markets. Now, many argue that long before that, we have not had free markets, and I would agree. But the degree of control and manipulation is at 100%. And it has been since the invention of computers. And you gotta get that into your head if you're gonna understand why cryptos go up, cryptos go down, gold goes up, gold goes down, silver goes up, silver goes down. 100% every day, every trade, although they don't have to do it on every trade, 100% manipulation and control. Now, so you might say, why the hell would anybody invest in an asset, no matter what the dynamics are, the reasons for doing it, in an asset that is 100% controlled and is guaranteed in the most difficult times not to go up. And it's a, it's a valid question. And it's one I've asked myself for the last 20 years while being a gold and silver investor and then in the crypto markets. Why do we put ourselves through this if we know it's rigged and they can place the price at zero with a click of a mouse? or at a million dollars with the click of a mouse. Why do we do it? The reason I do it is for the end of manipulation. And the end of manipulation is coming. Like all manipulations, it ends. But this one just happens to have gone on silver for 150 years. Gold for probably longer than that, but not really because gold's not as important as silver. But, and obviously cryptos since the day cryptos were invented. Now, why do I think it's ending? And I do think it's ending. In the Road to Ruta documents from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, it, it plays out the whole thing. Ruta is a programming term, Route A, talks about going back to a gold standard. These, these documents out of the Fed, there's comic books, there's, uh, there's pamphlets, all about going the need for a necessary backing of gold. Now this was written in 1979, the original article. It was a, it wasn't a comic book or anything. It was a short story written by a woman named Deborah Carpenter Beck for the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston monthly magazine called The Ledger. And in that, she basically outlined the need for a gold standard using a, a symbology of colored flowers. They also talked about the petrodollar with the black tears. That the, it's a really bizarre story. It's a really bizarre comic book that they made in 1981. And it's even more bizarre and with one change in the comic book when the comic book was redone just a year and a half before the 2008 financial crash. You could say the beginning of the crash was 2007. It was January 1st, 2007, that it was posted on the website. Huge red exclamation points after it. The comic book, Wishes and Rainbows, and the teacher's guide called a road, The Road to Ruta, A Teacher's Guide. Now, Ruta has many different meanings. One, Ruta is a programming term. It's Route A. Number two, it the character in the comic book is Alan Greenspan, which I figured out and. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to RoadToRuta.com and look at Discovering the Road to Ruta. Number three, the Road to Ruta is the name of Alan Greenspan's long-missing doctorate thesis, in my opinion. This is my opinion. 
Nobody's seen it. It's still not allowed to be shown. There are copies. There are two copies. Greenspan has one, and the, the public library, I think, had one. And then the Fed, uh, when, when Greenspan became the, the New York Public Library. But it wasn't available to anyone. It was really weird. But nobody needed it until Greenspan was placed as the head of the Fed in 1987 by Ronald Reagan. Because nobody thought the biggest gold bug in the world, which was Alan Greenspan, would ever be in charge of the Federal Reserve, the anti-gold Fed. But voila, it was done. In 1987, two months later, you had the crash of 87, all computer driven. Every computer crash since then, computer stock market crash has been computer driven. The next one will be computer driven. But what the, the situation is now, where we are now, how I figured out that they were gonna pull something on 9-11 of 2019, because they did it on 9-11, on 2008, or 2008, as uh, Paul Kanjorski has showed us. That's when the uh, system shut down, 550 billion was withdrawn from the money market fund, and there was a quote, electronic run on the banks. Now, we're already at 250 billion, but they're doing it slower and it's gonna be much larger, as in $20 trillion is my number. So yeah, things are progressing rapidly, and this has only been about a, a little over a month that uh, you know, it, last time it all happened in one fell swoop. This time it's happening slowly and then bang, it's gonna hit big. And that's what I talk about on this week's Friday Road Trip for Private Road members. It's part eight of the timeline. I haven't done a timeline since uh, right before September 11th. And I have graphed out when the, um, when the start of the QE slash repo slash banker bailout started it was right at September 11th then the, we had the weekend rate spike to 10% on uh, the Monday after September 11th so it's all again around September 11th sorry I got a new setup for my camera so where are we going from here uh, what's the next jump date I'm gonna talk about that on the Friday road trip which will be posted either today or tomorrow on the private road to Road to Ruta. But just keep in mind, this is all planned, long-term plan. The creation of the derivative neutron bomb that would destroy every single unbacked electronic fiat asset, not cryptocurrencies that are properly made. The creation of that neutron bomb was set in motion in the late 1990s when Alan Greenspan, again, forcibly required no regulation on derivatives forcibly <laughs> along with Robert Rubin the, the Treasury Secretary at the time and Larry Summers we all know who that criminal is so there's good guys and bad guys intermixed Greenspan's one plan was to destroy the monetary system obviously he did it with printing way too much money but he also did it through computer rigging, computer rigging, computer programming. So the next question is, when will the next crash be and how will it be, how will it unfold? I think it will be in 2019. I think it will unfold with the freezing, not necessarily the crashing of the markets, but the freezing of the markets with computer programs fighting each other. The breaking of the markets because that's the only way to destroy the derivative bubble. There is no tokenizing the derivatives. That would be impossible. At today's pace, it would take over 80 years to do that. And I am not gonna put this on my kids. They can try all they want. And they haven't done any, by the way. None of, well, the mortgage-backed securities are derivatives, but the treasury notes aren't derivatives. So all this money that's being bailed out from the Fed isn't their derivative book other than the mortgage-backed securities, which I, I think it's about 10% of the total bailout is mortgage-backed securities. So it's a small amount. So only 24 billion. So it'll actually take over a hundred years now at this pace to bail out the derivative bubble if it didn't keep growing. And it is growing by the trillions. JP Morgan added 11 trillion in the first quarter in derivatives. 
So not only do you have, can it be uh, tokenized, shall we say, with cryptocurrencies or crypto tokens, it cannot be. That should be obvious to everybody, but it is growing. The derivative bubble for it to continue to survive has to continue to grow. It is just like fiat money. With fiat money, money, debt-based money, you have to continually grow the debt-based money or there's no money to pay the debt. The derivative bubble is the same way. Unless you keep derivatives going higher and higher and higher, bigger and bigger, you cannot deal with the ramifications of uh, reality. And that's all the derivatives do is augment reality. So what does that mean for us today? It means hang on to your freaking hat because it is all happening as planned, as designed. Now they've tried to crash the system many times in the uh, 1980s with the, the uh, increase in inflation to 20% all planned. Remember, inflation is a number that they choose. They don't have to say, you know, there's 20% inflation. They could just say, hey, there's 2% inflation and could, because we have the data, we're never wrong. <laughs> and that's what they've been doing. So yes, the 80s, then 2000, uh, 2000 1987, the, uh, then the uh, savings and loan debacle was all part of the attempt to take down the old system. That didn't work out. 2001, the bubble created by the dot commerce, that didn't work out. 2008, that didn't work out. This is the biggest one ever. This is a bond bubble. And the bond bubble is so big that there's no way around it. We got a truck stopped in the middle of the street. So yeah, it is a big deal what's going on right now and, um, but it's all planned. It's all planned computers and derivatives and what do you do? You protect yourself, get your assets in your own possession 100% of the time. I don't care how nice the person is who's holding your gold, your silver, your cryptos. How many people like Litecoin? How many people are happy that many years ago, Charlie was sitting at his computer and said, hey, you know, I'm gonna make a clone of Bitcoin, but it's gotta be faster, it's gotta be cheaper, it's gotta be better. I'm gonna make it the silver of Bitcoin's gold. Thank you for that. That was a good moment. That was a great moment. So this is this is our tribute to uh, Michael and and to you people, you lovely crazy people. Ready? We're gonna go fast or slow? We got the drums. It's yours, come on. Like I'm ready, no, 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 no. Hey, 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 hey,